Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. So let's begin the new year with the highest hopes possible and the highest expectations. We should definitely have some expectations from ourselves and we should not shy away from challenges. So this is what I want to say to you. I wish you all a very happy new year and let's start the video in English language. Recently, a contract was signed between Mongla Port Authority and EGIS India Consulting Engineers Private Limited for providing consultancy for a capacity building project. Mongla port is in which country? So basically, Mongla port is in Bangladesh and what they want to do is they want to increase their capacity. They want to become more robust, more big uh, and uh, become a world level port. So for that, they have uh, tied up with an Indian consulting company called EGIS India. So the answer is Bangladesh. And let me tell you that there is one more port in Bangladesh, which is called Chittagong port very famous port. These days we call it Chattogram port. It means the same. You can call it Chittagong port or Chattogram. Both are good. And let me tell you that uh, recently we also celebrated 51st anniversary of Maitri Divas. Maitri Divas means friendship day between India and Bangladesh. It was celebrated on 6th of December. 6th of December. And of course, Silhet Silchar Festival was organized. Silhet is in Bangladesh, Silchar is in Assam. And Indian Ocean Rim Association, IORA, which is headquartered in Mauritius is Ebene. So IORA meeting, annual meeting happened in Dhaka recently. Also in Bangladesh, we have a place called Cox Bazar, where the international fleet review happened of the ships. International fleet review. And the Prime Minister of Bangladesh is Sheikh, Sheikh Hasina of the Awami League party and Sheikh Hasina let me tell you that she has been declared as a global ambassador for diabetes by the International Diabetes Federation which is headquartered in Brussels and this honor was given to her at the World Diabetes Congress that happened in Portugal recently right and uh, Sheikh Hasina gave a award called Friends of Liberation War Friends of Liberation War honor was given to American politician called Edward Kennedy because Edward Kennedy supported Bangladesh during the 1971 war. And there is an agreement with India over the split of the water of the Kushiara River. Recently, the TUTR Hyperloop and which of the following companies they have signed a MOU at IIT Madras for the development of Hyperloop technology. Now Hyperloop is a sort of a system which moves very fast, much faster than even bullet train and uh, there are different ways it works, magnetic levitation technology and other technologies are there. India wants to embrace Hyperloop technology and Hyperloop works on magnetic levitation technology, maglev or magnetic levitation and it, it, it is like at least 3 to 4 times faster than even a bullet train. That is how fast Hyperloop is. Right, so Tata Steel, Tata Steel and TUTR Hyperloop, they have signed a MOU at IIT Madras. Is that understood? And uh, basically, IIT Madras is doing all these testing of of Hyperloop, if it is possible in India or not, and uh, that is what they want to do. So let's hope Hyperloop technology comes to India very soon. IIT Madras was also in news because they have made a device called Sindhu Javan which can generate electricity from ocean waves and they put this device recently in Tutikorin in Tamil Nadu. And let me also tell you that India has created their first green steel brand which is called Kalyani Farishta. It is made by a company called Kalyani based in Pune. Union Minister Anurag Singh Thakur, Minister for Sports and also the Minister for Information Broadcasting, they have released this ministry has released official government of india calendar for the year 2023 so what is the overall theme of the calendar the theme is nay varsh nay sankalp new year new resolutions nay varsh naya varsh nay sankalp which means new year new resolutions this was the theme and for every month they focused on something for example for january the theme was kartavya path then for February, the theme was Kisan Kalyan or Farmer Welfare. For March, it was Spirit of Indian Women. April is Sikshit Bharat or Educated India. For May, it is Skill India. For June, it is Yoga. Um, so it is Fit India, Hit India. For July, it is Environmental Health. For August, it is Khelo India. 
For September, it is the world is one family, Vasudev Kutumbakam. Basically, this represents the G20 summit that will take around that time. And October, it is food security. November, it is self-reliant India. And December, it is Northeast India. So they have a theme for every month, but overall the theme was Naya Varsh Nay Sankal. And Khelo India University game will take place in UP and Khelo India Youth Games will take place in Madhya Pradesh. And let me also tell you Narag Singh Thakur in his capacity as the Minister for Information and Broadcasting, he has allowed an organization called Padma to act as a self-regulatory body for all the news publishers in India. Recently a new species of bush tomato called Geranovum bush tomato or scientifically called Solanum scalarium was discovered in which country? It is a completely new species of bush tomato and it was discovered recently in Australia in the Northern Territory. So Northern Territory is a um, state in Australia. Is that understood? It is a state in Australia. And uh, Australia got beaten recently by Canada in the Davis Cup. So Canada was the winner of the Davis Cup which is one of the um, the most prestigious uh, tournaments in tennis and Australia was also beaten by Switzerland for which cup it is the Billy Jean King Cup Billy Jean King Cup so Davis Cup is played by men and Billy Jean Cup Billy Jean King Cup is played by women they are the same but they are different like this is for men and this is for women so Australia got beaten in the final of both Switzerland defeated Australia to win their first ever Billie Jean King Cup and Canada defeated Australia to win their first ever Davis Cup. <laughs> so Australia is getting a smacking by everyone. And with Australia we have signed Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement ECTA and when was it applicable? So the date of enforcement was 29th of December 2022. Very very important question. And with Australia we also did Austro-Hind military exercise it was done in Mahajan field firing range in Bikaner in Rajasthan Mahajan field firing range and we have also launched an app called my well my well app is for the young water professional program between India and Australia where we are helping each other in water conservation so young water professional program is between India and Australia and let me also tell you there is an Indian teacher called Veena Nair she got the Prime Minister's Excellence Award recently in teaching science. She is based in Melbourne. Which of the following state has commemorated the 160th death anniversary of Yu Kyang Nagba? Excellent question. Who was he? Courtesy of these questions, you get to know about those freedom fighters who contributed a lot for India but they were unsung heroes. Unsung hero means we don't celebrate them. So Yu Kyang Nagba was one of the greatest freedom fighters of India and he was from Meghalaya. So the answer is Meghalaya and uh, he uh, started an uprising against the British colonial government and he was publicly hanged by the British in 1862. So he was hanged on 30th of December 1862 in the Jovai town. Jovai town is in West Jayantia Hills district of Meghalaya. In Meghalaya most of the hills are most of the districts are named after hills Hasi, Garo and Jayantia. So he was hanged in Jovai on 30th of December 1862 by the British. Basically, he belonged to the Jaintia tribal ethnic community and he waged an armed rebellion against the British. Is that understood? Uh, now, talking of uh, freedom fighters from Northeast, at least know these three or four which are asked in the exam. I know there are hundreds, but at least these. So, there was Kanaklata Barua. Kanaklata Barua was, uh, you know, shot down by the British. She was minor, only 17 years old um, when, she, when she joined the Mrityu Bahini, a suicide squad. She was not afraid of death. So Kanaklata Barua from Assam, never forget her name. Okay, In the exam, it's asked a lot of times. And of course, Bir Tikenderjit Singh, the king of Manipur. Bir Tikenderjit Singh, the king of Manipur. Also from Manipur, we have Rani Gedin Liu. And if you remember, there is a Rani Gedin Liu railway station also in Tamenglong. The same place in Manipur from where uh, the orange got the GI tag. Taming Long Orange if you remember last year. Rani Gadin Liu never forget her. And uh, and there were others also. There was Yu Tirot Singh Saim Lia from the Khasi Hills of Meghalaya. He was a native of Khasi Hills. Um, Yu Tirot Singh. Yu Tirot Singh Saim Lia from Meghalaya. I hope I am pronouncing the right, 
name correctly um, so yeah remember at least these which of the following institution has developed a green technology to rid the air filters of germs now these air filters that we use they have lot of germs and this institute has developed a technology for you know for uh, getting air filters rid of germs it is iisc bangalore the answer is indian institute of science bangalore and the institute said that they have in used the ingredients which are found in the green tea so iisc bangalore used green tea to create some chemicals for this right so they applied lot of brain in this and iisc bangalore was also in news because india asked first center of excellence for 3d bioprinting has been opened in iisc bangalore and let me also tell you iisc bangalore in partnership with google and art park has started a project called project vani 25 megawatt kabeli b1 and 20 megawatt lower modi khola they are the hydroelectric projects they were in news recently so they are in which country they are the hydropower projects of nepal right they are the hydropower projects of nepal and nepal has said that it will export electricity produced from them to india okay so india will get power which will be produced by these two hydropower projects and uh, nepal now has a new prime minister also prachand pushpa kumar dehel prachand is the uh, prime minister and with nepal we recently did the surya kiran exercise it was done at a place called sal jhandi where is sal jhandi sal jhandi is located in nepal jure bal gangadhar tilak eco park so bal gangadhar tilak eco park is located in a place called jure and jure is located in the panch area you must have heard about panch national park so panch national park is shared by madhya pradesh and maharashtra so the answer can be either a or b and the answer is b it is in the panch area of madhya pradesh so jure park jure eco park also called bal gangadhar tilak eco park of the western coal field limited was in news and why it was in news well these parks this park was inaugurated by pralad joshi the minister for coal minister for mines and minister for parliamentary affairs what will this park do it will promote mining tourism and now the thing is what is mining tourism well there is a sense of uh, adventure about it right for example i am sure you want to see the mining how the mining is done you want to visit the mines you want to go underground it's fun right so bal gangadhar tilak eco park has been set up by western coalfield limited and it was inaugurated by the minister for mines pralad joshi his constituency is dharwad and this will promote mines tourism in india this is to promote eco tourism is that understood similarly we all have other initiatives also for example we have a mahatma gandhi eco park also which is located in a place called saoner which is near nagpur so mahatma gandhi eco park is very famous for mines tourism if you like mines tourism then go to saoner near nagpur and you will have a great time in mahatma gandhi eco park so we are setting up lot of these eco parks right to promote mines tourism which of the following organization has released the 26th issue of the financial stability report for december financial stability report is released two times a year by the reserve bank of india the answer is rbi and what does this report say this report says that the bank credit is picking up definitely the demand for loans is good but indian economy is facing lot of headwinds headwinds means lot of trouble so you know the ukraine uh, russia war has affected us a lot um maybe not that much compared to european countries but still it has affected because it has led to tightening of the supply chains and the global volatility in the financial markets is also affecting india so these are macro parameters we should worry about and uh, it also says that the gross non performing asset ratio of all the scheduled commercial banks in india put together was at a 7 year low of 5% when at the end of september 2022 so after the end of the first 6 months of current financial year and the net non performing asset this is gross this is net obviously net one will be even lesser so net non performing asset ratio was just 1.3% which is the lowest in last 10 years so with respect to npa but then the thing is lot of npas have been written off by the banks so they have compromised their profitability for less npa 
सो वी कॉन्ट से दैट इफ द एन पी एज आर रिड्यूसिंग इट इज ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ गुड मैनेजमेंट और साउंड कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस इट इज ऑल्सो बिकॉज ऑफ द लोन राइट ऑफ राइट सो दिस इज वॉट दिस रिपोर्ट सेज दैट येस विद रेस्पेक्ट टू एन पी एज दे हैव रिड्यूस्ड ग्रॉस एन पी ए आर फाइव परसेंट लोवेस्ट इन लास्ट सेवन ईयर्स एंड नेट एन पी एज वन पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट द लोवेस्ट इन लास्ट टेन ईयर्स एंड दे ऑल्सो सैड दैट द कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो ऑफ ऑल द शेड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक इन इंडिया पुट टूगेदर इट कैन बी फोर्टीन पॉइंट नाइन ऑल्सो सो फोर्टीन पॉइंट नाइन विल बी इन द बेस लाइन सिनारियो एंड देन इन द मीडियम स्ट्रेस सिनारियो इट विल बी फोर्टीन परसेंट एंड इन द सिवियर स्ट्रेस इफ देर इज अवियर स्ट्रेस इन द इकोनॉमी देन इट विल बी थर्टीन पॉइंट वन परसेंट राइट सो दिस इज द एक्सपेक्टेड कैपिटल एडिक्यूसी रेशियो इन सेप्टेंबर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री वन ईयर फ्रॉम नाउ रिसेंटली श्रीराम फाइनेंस लिमिटेड हैज गॉट अ लोन ऑफ हंड्रेड मिलियन डॉलर फ्रॉम विच बैंक so shriram finance limited is a company it will give it will take loan cheap loan from asian development bank and it will further give this loan for uh, purchase of new and used vehicle across india right so they have taken a loan of 100 million dollar from adb and adb has given 125 million dollar loan to tamil nadu recently they have given 250 million dollar to boost the logistics sector in india and they have given 780 million dollar loan for the chennai metro expansion the second meeting of the national ganga council chaired by pradhan mantri modi was held where so it was held recently in kolkata and the chief ministers of uttarakhand up jharkhand west bengal and bihar they participated and they talked about ganga cleaning and all the issues related to ganga is that understood now let me tell you that the first meeting of the national ganga council happened in 2019 in kanpur kanpur is also located on the bank of ganga and if i ask you which is the cleanest city in india on the bank of ganga then what will be your answer it is not an easy answer okay let me divide the um let me divide uh, the answer into two segment okay so so uh, let me put it this way the cities which are located on the bank of ganga which is the cleanest then the answer will be haridwar okay which is in uttarakhand but this is in the large cities category this is in the large cities category what about the small cities so which is the small city which is the cleanest which is located on the bank of ganga river then what will be your answer so then your answer will be bijnor right then your answer will be bijnor bijnor was ranked number 1 among the ganga towns in less than 1 lakh population haridwar is in major cities more than 1 lakh population but bijnor in up is the cleanest town on the bank of ganga river in less than 1 lakh population is that understood so haridwar was number 1 among large and bijnor was number 1 among the small and don't forget both PM Modi inaugurated the Joka Taratala stretch of the Joka Esplanade metro project and he also flagged off Eastern India's first and overall seventh Vande Bharat express train between Howrah and New Jalpaiguri where so you know the answer it is West Bengal the answer is West Bengal and uh, let me also tell you uh, in in the last question one more thing i want to add that for cleaning ganga we have a namami gange program and namami gange program was recently declared by united nations as one of the top 10 programs in the world for world restoration flagship understood one of the top 10 in the world it was declared by united nations so well seventh vande bharat train and the first in east india will be uh, will be traveling from abda to new jalpaiguri and this joka esplanade metro and i mean it, it is the extension of the kolkata metro so this is not very important but yeah this is important abda and new jalpaiguri so it will take approximately 6 to 7 hours uh, it will leave havda station at 6 am and it will reach jalpaiguri at 1:30 pm so it will take 7 and a half hours and the price is around 2825 rupees uh, for the executive class and for the normal chair car it is 1565 and these trains are vande bharat too so they can achieve a speed of 180 km per hour and these trains are fitted with kavach technology which is the train collision avoidance system and the prime minister also announced four other railway project so these are the some new railway lines again these are not important at all from exam point of view according to the recently released report responsiveness under rti okay this report 
which of the Indian state is the worst performing in terms of RTI responsiveness. So you can file a RTI that is Right to Information Act of 2005. RTI Act of 2005 enables a timely response to the citizen request for government information. So you can file RTI. But which state is not responding at all? So worst performing in India is Tamil Nadu in this regard. You can keep on filing RTI. But let me tell you, only 14% of the RTIs, they answered. Tamil Nadu government was the worst performing RTI responsiveness. Only 14% of the information they provided. And which was the second worst? Maharashtra was the second worst. Maharashtra provided information in only 23% of the cases. That's it. So this is what is very troubling, very worrying. Uh, because RTI strengthens democracy. Who among the following from India has won India's first ever silver medal in the FIDE Women's World Blitz Chess Championship 2022? So it is the effervescent Koneru Hampi from Andhra Pradesh. Koneru Hampi. And uh, let me make it very simple for you. So there are two types of chess. One is called Rapid. One is called Blitz. In Rapid, you get only 15 minutes to think. In Blitz, you get only 3 minutes. So blitz is like lightning fast. Now in rapid, let me divide further it into male and female. And again, blitz also, I will divide further into male and female or oh, winner. Okay. So in both male category, rapid and blitz, the winner was Magnus Carlsen. Very easy now. Magnus Carlsen was the winner in both male category. He, was, he is now the world's rapid champion also and he is the world blitz champion also. And this tournament happened in Almaty which is in Kazakhstan. And by the way, we have recently did Kaz end exercise with Kazakhstan in Umroi military station in Meghalaya. Now let's talk about women. So in rapid, India's Savita Shri, she won the bronze medal. She was third. She was third. So who won the gold medal? Gold medal was won by a Chinese woman called Tan Zongi. Tan Zongi. And in the, now let's come to the Blitz. Okay, let's come to the Blitz. So in Blitz, silver medal was won by Koneru Hampi. Koneru Hampi was second. She won the silver medal. And who won the gold medal? Gold medal was won by a woman called Bibi Sara. Bibi Sara is the local favorite. She is from Kazakhstan itself. Understood now? Absolute clear? So these were the Blitz champion Magnus Carlsen and BB Sara. Tata Power, they have received the letter of award for setting up 255 megawatt hybrid that is wind and solar power project in which state? So it is Karnataka. They will set it up in Karnataka. They have gotten the approval and very soon they will finalize the location as well. Now if I ask you about hybrid project, the largest hybrid project, hybrid project simply means there is both. There is the wind power and solar power. So the world's largest hybrid project has been set up by Adani Group in Jaisalmer. World's largest hybrid that is wind and solar project has been set up by Adani Group in Jaisalmer. Is that understood? And what is the capacity of this project that Adani Group will set up in Jaisalmer? This project will have 600 megawatt of solar power and 150 megawatt of wind power. And where has Adani set up the tallest windmill in the world? They have set up in Mundra port. It is even higher than Statue of Unity. Who among the following has assumed the chairman position and managing director of Moil? What is Moil? Have you heard about this company before Moil? So Moil is Manganese Ore India Limited. It's a mini ratan company. It mines manganese, right? And it is the largest producer of manganese ore in India with, with a market share of 50%. It operates 11 mines in Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. Most of the manganese is in Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. So Ajit Kumar Saxena has become the chairman of Moil. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inaugurated the first metro rail in Dhaka. It has been built with financial and technical support from which country? So Japan has given the financial and technical support for the Dhaka metro in Bangladesh. A star has been named after which Indian personality it was registered in the International Space Registry. So we are talking about Atul Bihari Vajpayee, former Prime Minister of India. His birthday is Good Governance Day on 25th of December. And let me tell you, there was a Good Governance Week that was celebrated by Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances from 19 December to 25 of December. 
and using the CP Grams portal, more than 20 lakh grievances were redressed during that week. Understood? So there is a star which is located. This star is very close to the sun. In fact, they are saying, BJP people are saying that it is the closest star to the sun. And uh, how, how far is it from Earth? It is 392.01 light years away from Earth. So this star, what are the coordinates of the star? So I don't understand it very well, but it is something like 1405.25.3. 60 28 51.9 these are the coordinates of the star this is where you will find it and uh, these coordinates were written in the international space registry and atal bihari Bajpayee was born in gwalior padma shri awardee shri bhashyam vijay sarathi passed away he was known for his great poetry he was known for his great poetry understood ms prabhakar was a journalist academic and author in kannada language he passed away he was an author in both English and Kannada. That reminds me of Kumble Rao. He passed away. He was a Yakshgan proponent. Pritzker Award winning architect Arata Izoslaki passed away. He was a Japanese architect. And recently Pritzker Prize was given to Francis Kare from Burkina Faso. And he is the first African to win Pritzker Prize which is given for architecture. And Hira Ben Bodhi, Narendra Modi's mother passed away. She was born um, in Gujarat only and Vadnagar was her hometown. Now Vadnagar has been added to the to the which list be you know just before you put something in the world heritage site there is a list which is called the tentative list. So Vadnagar town then Sun Temple in Modhera Sun Temple in Modhera the Vadnagar town and Una Koti in Tripura these have been added to the tentative list of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So that was the first video of the year, 1st January 2023. I wish you all a very happy new year and God bless you all and God bless me.